welcome back to the arcade. Uh, we're still working on the Star Trek Next Generation Pinball Machine. In the last video, we installed the new color DMD, and uh, I tell you, I, I really like the, uh, the addition to the game. It, it really brings the, the game up to date. Uh, but before I installed it, I was having a few little issues that would wouldn't be there all the time, but they would creep up from time to time. One was with the uh, the diverters under the play field. Sometimes it, it, it wasn't giving me uh, a ball to my right cannon. And uh, mechanically, the diverter, one of my other videos, I, uh, I, it was sticking, and uh, I fixed that problem. But evidently, I'm still having a problem with the optos. Uh, in the subways and that controls the uh, the diverter. Also, I noticed that uh, sometimes my upper right flipper would get weak, so weak that it wouldn't even bat the ball. And also, lastly, the uh, cannons sometimes would slow way down. Uh, and all these things are powered from the 12 volt unregulated power supply, which is the same power supply that the color DMD taps into and uses power from. So let's open up the back box here. And we'll take down the color DMD panel, speaker panel. This is the uh, uh, power driver board. And basically, um, it has bridge rectifiers and capacitors for each one of the uh, voltage circuits. Uh, it has five of them. Over here is BR5 and C30. That's the uh, 12 volt unregulated and we're going to focus on that. So first thing we're going to do is get out our voltmeter and we're going to uh, test the voltage on the test points and find out what each one of our voltages are and uh, and we'll go from there. All right, the first thing we need to do is test the voltage on the test points for the uh, the driver power board. So this right here, this the big board right here is the uh, the power driver board and uh, it has test points uh, that you first you have to take your your multimeter and I have this uh, little probe type multimeter and I have the ground hooked up to the uh, the ground wire in the back box so all we're going to do is take our probe and touch each one of the test points and take a reading so we'll start out with test point one and that's the one that's giving us the problems uh, test point one is the 12 volt unregulated and it should be uh, at least I would say in the neighborhood of 13 volts if, if it was outputting what it should. The game is uh, in a track mode right now and the color DMD is plugged in and is on. So let's go ahead and see what our 12 volt unregulated has given us. We'll put it on test point one here. And we're only getting 10.5 volts. So that is way low. And that's our uh, suspected problem. But while we're at it, we want to check the rest of our voltages. Uh, another key voltage is the plus 5 volts, which supplies power to the MPU uh, for the logic. And test point two is right here. So let's get a reading on that. And I'm getting 4.83, which is a little bit lower than I would like it. But I haven't noticed any resets. Uh, 
so that might also be borderline or it, we'll have to check into that all right next is test point three which is the 12 volt regulated circuit so test point three is right next to test point two right here so let's get our reading from there and I'm getting 11.92 all right which might be a little low but then again um, it's closer than the 12 volt unregulated was okay now let's do test point six and test point six is right here underneath these two capacitors getting 72.3 volts and that's the 50 volt it's supposed to be 50 volts but since there's no load on it right now 72.3 is uh, what it should be that that should be okay next we'll do test point seven which is to 20 volts and test point seven is located right here underneath this uh, big white resistor. And this is the 20 volt line. And I'm getting 21.2. All right. And last we have test point number eight, which is the 18 volt line and test point 8 is over here underneath this capacitor right on the edge of the board and I'm getting sort of going up and down I guess because it's powering some of the feature lights I guess uh, I'm getting about 15.8 volts so that's a little low but come but that might be okay since it is under load but anyway the main purpose of getting these voltage readings is to find out what we have now and next I'm gonna shut the game down take all these connectors loose take the screws loose and we're gonna take the board out of the game and what we're gonna do is we're gonna replace the bridge rectifier uh, this is the bridge rectifier BR5 and C30 capacitor this is for the unregulated 12 volt, which is what's giving me the problem. And right now, it's not real hot, but it's too hot to where I, I can't leave my finger on it. So uh, I suspect that this bridge capacitor is uh, partially bad. And these caps even have the original uh, label on them where, where they were checked at the factory so I'm pretty sure they're original so we're going to go ahead and replace all the bridge rectifiers and all of these capacitors it's two rectifiers here two capacitors here it's two more under, underneath this heat sink and then we have the two more here so we're going to go ahead and replace all those and put the board back on and then we'll retest and find out if it actually has changed any of our voltage readings and uh, that way we'll know by replacing those components uh, we may have solved the, the problem and like I say our main problem is the 12 volt unregulated because that's pulling down to 10.5 volts which is giving us the problem with the, um, the weak flippers and the problem with the ball diverter because both of those are run off of the optics 
the, the optical switches and uh, the switches are run off of the 12 volt unregulated so uh, it's given me some flaky readings and uh, also the the cannon motors are running slow so uh, we'll go ahead and and start uh, pulling those parts and putting the new ones on and give it a give it a try well we removed the power driver board from the Star Trek next gen generation and uh, we're going to replace the bridge rectifier and the capacitors. Uh, I suspect that the one right here, BR5, is, is going bad um, because I have low 12-volt uh, unregulated power. And uh, as you can see, the capacitor here still has the original uh, inspection sticker on it uh, where the board was manufactured. So looking at the board, I've, I've, I've looked at all the connectors and all the connectors on the board look fine. There's no signs of tarnishing or, or burnt connectors. And I looked underneath the board real good for any uh, old repairs. And I've only found one repair. Everything else looks original, untouched. And uh, you can tell because the... Uh, when they soldered the component back on, uh, they didn't clean the flux off. And you can tell us it's not quite as nice looking as the factory jobs there. So, And that's one of the bridge rectifiers, BR4, had been replaced. And when they replaced it, they did not replace the capacitor. Why, I don't know. Uh, maybe this failed when the machine was fairly new and they didn't deem it necessary uh, to replace it at that time. So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to go ahead and replace all five of the bridge rectifiers and all five of the filter caps uh, for the rectifiers. And the old uh, capacitors were uh, 15,000 microfarad at 25 volt. We're going to replace them with 15,000 microfarad at 35 volts. And the bridge rectifiers, the original ones, uh, are 35 amp at 200 volts. So we're going to replace them uh, with the 35 amp 600 volt version, which I guess is a little beefier. Uh, so it, it ought to at least be within specs or better than original specs. So let's go ahead and get started and... Uh, since we're just replacing the, the bridge rectifiers and the capacitors, uh, we'll just go ahead and take them all off at the same time. And, um, and then we'll clean the board up and get it ready to install the, uh, the new components. Okay, we're going to start with the, the first uh, capacitor and, and bridge rectifier, which is when it was giving me the problems. And the bridge rectifier has four leads. Two of them are close together and two of them are farther apart. That makes it easy for orientation to, to make sure you get them back in the right position because unless you bend the leads like crazy, uh, as you can see right here, the, uh, these two are spaced closer together than these two. So when we put it back in, it'll actually go in this way from underneath the board. The two short ones will be on this end and the two long ones will be on this side. So let's go ahead and take our uh, desoldering station here and see if we can't go ahead and remove these. Uh, see if I got the right tip on that. I believe I'm going to have to put the bigger tip on it. Okay, now that we got the right tip on our desoldering gun here, let's try this again.
Well, we had a little trouble with the, the soldering gun there that was clogged up. So we got it unclogged now. We, we got the four uh, solder joints for the rectifier loose. seem to have one that's still hanging up just a little bit. So I'll grab the rectifier under the bottom here, put a little heat on that joint, and it'll pull right out. Alright, now let's do the capacitor. Give it a little heat and see if we can't pull it to one side and get it to pop through. Okay. That got the capacitor out. Now we got four more to go. They're all loose. And that's number two. falls right out. So next we'll do the two capacitors. Okay, next. Loose. 
these snap-in capacitors have a, a flat uh, lead on them, unlike a round lead. And they designed to when you press them in the hole, they snap in so that they hold themselves in when you solder them. That makes a kind of a A little bit harder sometimes to get out. I actually have to add some solder to it and suck it out again. That just leaves the two that are under the heat sink here, which I believe they're, they're for the, at least one of them I think is for the 5 volt regulated, uh, maybe both of them, I'm not sure. But anyway, first thing we're going to do is probably go ahead and just take the heat sink off rather than to try to lift both of them out at the same time because you're talking about four leads rather than I mean eight leads rather than four so we'll take our screwdriver and the has Phillips head screws through these holes here so we'll unscrew those and, and take that heat sink off next okay this one here is centered up good but this one here is a little off center for some reason maybe the leads have been bent a little bit I'm going to go ahead and take this one loose first, since it's going to be easier to get to. Now, let me see. Yeah, it looks like the leads on that one will bend a little bit somehow, so I'll straighten them up. Now I can get to that good. Alright, now the heat sink dropped off. Put that up here out of the way. Turn the board over and let our screws drop out. This one might still be a little off center. And we got that one out. back over and go ahead and take these two bridge rectifiers out. fell out. Alright, let's go for this one. And that one falls right off too. Alright, that just leaves the last two capacitors here. Let's see, yeah, they're right here.
and may have to put some fresh solder on those. They seem to take a little more heat too because of that flat blade versus just a regular round lead. So I turn the heat up just a little bit. You don't want to turn the heat up too high on the desoldering gun because it will cook the traces and if you leave it on there too long. So you got to be real careful about how much heat you put on that. See if I can put some heat on it from a soldering on and get one of them to pop through. Okay, that was the one that had it. It actually looks like somebody tried to clip them off. They, they did. They clipped them off after they put them on. So but that was factory. All right, one more. Uh, we have some solder come out of our soldering gun, so it might be starting to need a clean out. So let's clean that out, and we'll get this last one. All right, here's a little bit about desoldering uh, guns. The little cartridge that catches the solder in this particular model has a spring which usually the solder fills up inside that spring and then you can just pull the spring and it'll fall right out. Well, I've got a little solder jam right here. So, it actually had, had lumped up and it's actually still hot. So that was causing a, a backup in my desoldering gun. So, Now that we have that cleared, put the spring back on, and we'll be able to put it back together and continue on. Okay, so now we're back, got a solder jam cleared up. Let's go and try for this last capacitor. Got it a little bit. All right, didn't take much. But that one is out too. So now we're just going to clean up these solder pads, take some solder wick, let it heat up.
and we're going to do that for every one of our solder uh, pads and we're going to uh, turn it over and do the flip side because you do have some connections on the other side of the board and while we're doing this we're also going to check and make sure we haven't damaged any of the the solder eyes on either side of the board that's very important because if, if you pull one of these eyes up and when you put it back and it doesn't make connection then you got a problem so if you did pull any of these eyes up or messed up any of these traces they'll have to be repaired uh, and if we have any we'll show you how to do that but I don't think we, we have anything to worry about but uh, once we do the inspection of it and uh, get all these cleaned up then we'll know for sure okay well we've cleaned up all the traces so we're ready to get started replacing the components we're going to start with C30 and the BR5 now the capacitor is an electrolytic capacitor and uh, it has a positive lead and a negative lead you can always tell the negative lead is usually marked it usually either has a a stripe on the side or it, it will actually have a negative sign on it um, so these are snap-in capacitors and the leads are bent just right so that when you put them in the hole they sort of snap in and hold itself in place so if we look on the board here here's the positive uh, hole and the negative is opposite so what we want to do is make sure we get that uh, in the right position so we'll line them up and it snaps in now that's uh, ready for solder now same thing over on this side here with the bridge rectifier um, if you notice it has four leads two are close together and two are farther apart so there's it's no way you can actually get this wrong and, unless you actually bend the heck out of these leads so it only basically goes in one way so what we need to do is go ahead and, and put them in and what we want to do is if they're down on the on the board like this uh, it builds up heat so what we want to do before we solder it is we want to make sure we get it up off the board so uh, when we turn it over we'll be able to set that So we'll just pull this down and we may have to put something underneath it to sort of hold it up in, in the uh, correct position that we want it in. So I think what I'll take is this heat sink. might just be a little too low. Let's we'll see if we can find something else. Okay, well I found me a, a piece of wood, which is a one inch piece of wood, and I slide that underneath here and set the rectifier down on it flat. And of course the, the board is laying somewhat flat. To get it perfectly flat, what I'll do is I'll put a, one of the other capacitors in the other side to hold it up. Okay, now that we got the, the board leveled and we have our board holding the rectifier up off of the, in, at the right level, we'll take and put some uh, liquid flux on the connectors. And we can go ahead and solder the connections.
I want to make sure that we get enough solder, get it hot enough and get the solder so it will wick down into the through hole so that it will uh, make connection on the other side of the board. Not every connection makes a connection on the other side, but a lot of them do. Should have it. Now we'll take our board out. Now we'll look on this side here. And I don't know if you can see it or not, but what you want to look for is to make sure that that solder came through the other side and has wicked up on the on the component lead making a, a good solder joint. You can't see it under the capacitor because it's so close to the to the uh, board but uh, more than likely you, you got a good joint if, if you got a good hot uh, solder on there and the solder melted good. So now all I have to do is take and clip my leads off we finish soldering the other capacitors and bridge rectifiers on, we'll come back and we'll clean the flux off the board. Okay, next we're going to put in the two bridge rectifiers, BR3 and BR4, and uh, C11 and C5. So we'll go ahead, since the capacitors hold the self in place, we'll go ahead and, and snap them in place first. Uh, positive side is on here. This is the negative side. Negative side goes opposite positive. Always make sure you get this correct. If you don't, when you apply power, you may get a big boom. And these will go off like a giant firecracker. Now. Uh, C11 right here, the positive is right here, so the negative goes on, on this back side. This is the negative with the stripe. And that snaps into place. Okay, now the bridge rectifiers. And we'll go ahead and we'll put both of those in too. And of course they just like the others, they only go in one way. Really hard to mess them up. Now we'll just let them drop all the way down for the time being. And what we'll do is we'll come back and take our block of wood and we'll lay it down here and when we flip it over it'll set the correct height for our, our bridge rectifiers.
Okay. So now all we have to do is go ahead and solder these in. And we'll take our flux. Put a little liquid flux on them. solder them in place. Okay, now we'll check and make sure that we have a good solder joint on the underside of the bridge capacitors. And all of them look good. So we can go ahead and clip our leads. It just leaves two more capacitors and two more bridge rectifiers. And we'd already put one of the bridge rectifiers in to level the board when we turned it over. So now we'll go ahead and put the other one in 
positive is on this side, so we want the negative on the opposite side. And it looks like this one got bent in shipping. So we're going to have to straighten the tip up a little bit. And a little harder to snap in because of that, but it snapped in. So what we're going to do, because these two have the heat sink on them, I'm going to go ahead and solder these uh, capacitors in next. Uh, that way I won't have to worry about them falling, falling out while I'm trying to get those lined up. So let's put a little bit of liquid flux on them. Go ahead and solder those capacitors in. Okay, now we'll clip the leads off. And that just leaves the bridge rectifiers. Now, because these get the heat sink on them, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and uh, put them on the heat sink first and then put them on the board and then we'll adjust the height. We're going to have to do that a little bit differently and, um, and then we can solder them in. So what we have to do is I'm going to go ahead and clean this old uh, heat sink compound off and we'll apply some new and you need very little heat sink compound on there just enough to to cover the, the surface you, you don't need gobs of it so that when you put it on it squeezes out all over the place now you just need enough to transfer the heat from the uh, bridge rectifier into the heat sink that's what its purpose is so let's go ahead and set that up and then we'll be right back Okay, we've already got one mounted on there, and as you can see, we just got enough heat sink compound just to, to coat it. And both of these go on in the same orientation. In other words, the, uh, the two uh, closest together go on the same side. get the screw to start. Whoops, that won't good. And we'll go ahead and tighten that down. Alright, so now we have the bridge rectifiers on the heat sink. So now all we have to do 
is to install them and get all the holes to line up. Okay. Okay, now you wouldn't think it would matter which way you put these uh, on, but if you notice when you put them on, you have a little bit of the, the heat sink over the edge of this one, and it's pretty flush on this one. So you have to put them on so that the flush end is, is down here on the end with this capacitor. If you don't, this end that hangs over will jam into the uh, capacitor. You can make it fit, but it's kind of a tight fit. And what you know, we put them on backwards, so we had to just loosen up the screws and turn them 180 degrees. That way we could get the right orientation. Because the two leads that are closer together go on this side. So now we have it right. So now we can go ahead and line up our leads here. And just like that, we got them lined up. So now what we can do is turn the board over. Now we need to get them at the right position here. And I believe we'll have enough leads sticking up if we just go ahead and, and let it lay down flat with the top of the capacitors. So let's try that. No, I don't like that. We need a, something to shim it up. So let me find something to shim it up and we'll be right back. Okay, well you never know what you're going to find laying around that can come in useful. We need something to shim up to put underneath the heat sink to raise the uh, the uh, bridge rectifiers high enough, close enough up to the board. So what I found was two uh, paint stirrers and we'll put two of them together and that should be about what we need. So we'll go ahead and we'll put the paint stirrers underneath the bridge rectifiers and that brings them about to the same level as the others. So that looks good. That worked out great. So now we'll just take our liquid flux. And we'll go ahead and solder these eight connections.
Okay, that should do it. Cool off a second. Take a paint stairs. Now we'll check underneath the board here. Make sure they got a good solder joint on the underside. And they look good. So now we we'll clip the legs off. Well, we finished replacing all the bridge rectifiers and filter capacitors on the driver power board. And uh, we've cleaned all the flux off of the, the board. So we're ready to install it back into the back box. Okay, well, we've got the board back in the back box. We got everything hooked up. Uh, beforehand, I took pictures of, of all the connectors so I could go back and look at the pictures and make sure I had everything connected correctly. Everything looks correct. So now I'm going to fire up the game for the first time. And then I'm going to check the voltages and see if we have any uh, different voltage readings now that the board has been rebuilt. So cross the fingers and hope we don't see any sparks and smoke. And that's a good sign. The cannons look like they're moving pretty fast. So let's uh, check the unregulated uh, 12 volts at test point one. Okay, on test point one. fluctuating a little bit, but I'm getting about 12, between 12.8 and 12.7, settling down 12.81. So, I'm now getting, come, keep hitting that flipper button. Now getting 12.81 volts on the unregulated 12 volt. Before I was getting only 10.5. So I'd say that's a definite improvement. And that's with the color DMD running. As you can see, the color DMD is running. So that's good. Uh, that means that we definitely had a problem with the... Um, both the probably the capacitor and the bridge rectifier and the bridge rectifier hasn't been on very long I can feel it's warm but I can hold my hand on it and uh, no problems there it's, it's, it's just barely if I had to guess I'd say probably 80 maybe 90 degrees at the most These other bridge rectifiers over here, they're not even warm. And the ones with the heat sink on them, they're not even warm. I'm sure they'll warm up once you get playing the game. But sitting here idling, it's not taxing it uh, too bad. So let's go ahead and check the other voltages to see how they differ. Because I did change uh, all five of these bridge rectifiers as well as all five of them capacitors. So let's do test point two, which is the plus five volts. And there I'm getting 4.84. And before I was getting 4.83. So not a big change there. But I wasn't having any problem with the with resets or anything. So let's do test point three, which is the 12 volt regulated. All right. 
test point three is right here beside the five volt. And getting eleven fluctuating a little bit because evidently it's running the lights. 11.92 is what settles in on the highest point and that's exactly what I was getting before 11.92 so no change on the 12 volt regulated on test point 3 alright let's try test point 6 which is to 50 volts before I was getting 72.3 so test point 6 uh, let me see that was there. Where's test point six? Okay. Hiding right up here. And I'm getting 72.2, which is, I was getting 72.3 before, so no drastic change there. All right, let's try test point seven. That's the 20 volt. I was getting 21.2. Alright, that's test point. 7 is right here underneath this white resistor. And I'm getting 21.4. And I had 21.2 before, so that's no drastic change. Now test point 8. That's the 18 volts. And I was only getting 15 8 on that. So test point 8 is right down here. And it's fluctuating. The most I'm getting 17.8. So it goes from 17 to 14. So that's a, a little bit of a gain, but still basically in the same range as I was getting before. So the only marked improvement was with the 12 volt unregulated. So now all we have to do is put the uh, close the back box back up and we'll go ahead and try game and see if we have any reset problems which well not really reset problems but uh, ball opto problems weak flippers I was getting the, the upper right flipper was so weak and that was because of the the opto was getting starved because it didn't have the full uh, 12 volts so uh, okay let's give it a test and see what happens Okay, well let's play a game and see how it's working now. Welcome to the guys. Okay. The probe has discovered nothing. Plenty of power in the upper right flipper now, so the flippers are working again. And the, the cannons seem to be running a lot faster too.
if you want to continue. Space, the final frontier. These are the voyages of the Starship Enterprise. Its continuing mission to explore strange new worlds, to seek out new life and new civilizations, to boldly go where no one has gone before. Okay, well, it seems like uh, replacing BR-5 and C-30 I fixed my 12 volt unregulated power supply and uh, that was the reason for my weak flippers and uh, the optos freaking out and the slow running cannon motors. So now with the uh, 12 volt unregulated back up to where it's supposed to be the game seems to be working just fine. Uh, the color DMD is working fine. Still got plenty of voltage uh, on the unregulated 12 volt with the color DMD uh, connected. Everything is working fine. Um, the only modifications I have other than the, the DMD running on the 12 volt unregulated of course is the lasers and the cannon and they only run when the motors on the cannons are running. So you know uh, if you were to put any accessories like toppers or or extra lights or whatever um, you might still want to consider uh, running a separate power supply just because you can and it's easy to do. Uh, but as far as a stock machine uh, it has no problem with the uh, DMD. If you install the color DMD and you have a problem with your 12 volt unregulated voltage, you had the problem already existing in the machine like I did. So don't panic. Uh, all you have to do is get your bridge rectifier and capacitor and just a little bit of time. Go ahead and change them out and you'll be good to go. So till next time. We're going to play a little more Star Trek Next Generation, and as Captain Picard would say, make it so.